The idea of doing this module is to do, to start off with an extendal cortical mastoidectomy. Here you can see we have the ear canal, the zygoma, and then usually we are able to identify the jugular bulb, which is usually down here, but the sigmoid sinus will turn, the transverse sinus will become the sigmoid sinus somewhere here. It's always a flat notch somewhere here. Okay? So what we need to do is we need to dissect and remove all this muscle away from the mastoid itself. Can I have a blade? Okay. So this way now you're able to see the digastric groove, the digastric muscle. So the reason why you need to do this is so that we can drill off the mastoid tip later as required. Okay? So if you remove all the periosteum here, then the surgery will be much easier. Once we have done that, now let's identify first of all the dewar in the middle cranial fossa. The middle cranial fossa dewar, there. You can easily and very quickly identify the dewar of the middle cranial fossa. You can see the sound is changing. When you see the sound changing, you know that we are very close to the middle cranial fossa. Right? There. Can you guys see that? That's the middle cranial fossa. So once we have identified the middle cranial fossa, the next one we want to identify is the retrosigmoid. Here you can see the we are already in the mastoid tip. So now we are going to drill behind the sigmoid sinus to identify the retrosigmoid region and hopefully the dewar that comes with it as well. This seems to be a very pneumatized mastoid, which is good. I can already make out the blue of the sigmoid sinus. So that's where the sigmoid sinus is going to be. So this is where the dewar of the retro sigmoid would be. Okay? So once we have identified the dewa or middle cranial fossa, then the dewa of the retro sigmoid, then we can continue our dissection there. Can you see guys? Is it clear on the screen? That's the dewa of the retro sigmoid. Okay? So once we have found the retro sigmoid dewa as well, so we identify the dewa of all this first. So once we have identified all this dewa, so this middle cranial fossa dewa, that's the retro sigmoid dewa. Now we can we can remove the mastoid. Oh, really. So do a cortical mastoid by using the largest cutting bird that we have. So now so when you go slow you cut substantially. When you go fast, you polish. Now, we are coming into the anthem. So, when you do this, try to get the biggest possible burr. The handicap we have is that our biggest possible burr is not really that big. So now, they are coming into the mastoid anthem itself and that's probably coming close to the sigmoid sinus region. And now, we need to find the anthem, which should be here. And now we are coming close to the anthem and how do we know that we are in the anthem? Is when we have when we are able to see the lateral semicircular canal. Can you all see the semicircular canal there? Now, once you find the lateral semicircular canal, we... There's a lateral semicircular canal there. Now we drill the scutum. And I can see the incus coming into view. So the same way now, we're going to drill and thin the ear canal wall. And now, we're going to identify We've already found the incus, lateral semicircular canal. So now, 
let's look for the sigmoid sinus and the other structures as well. So there's a lot of S cells here as you can see. Oh, there's sigmoid sinus there. You can see the sigmoid sinus here? All right, so under the microscope it's not even blue, yeah? it looks white. So now you can see the lateral semicircular canal. Now we're going to drill the sinoidal angle. The sound is changing, so I know we are very close to something. That's the labyrinth, as you can see. That's the lateral semicircular canal coming into view. Yeah? So now I'm going to please sigmoid. Sound is changing as well, so I know that we are very close. So now we are going under the labyrinth. That's the posterior semicircular canal coming into view. We're going under the labyrinth now, as you can see. And here, if we go lower down, you will be going into the jugular bulb. Now I'm going to drill off downwards so that we can go to the mastoid tip. And then you'll also find the digastric ridge. That's a digastric ridge coming into view. Can you guys see that? So that will give us a landmark to the facial nerve. So with this now, let me go to a higher magnification. Okay, so I can see now the incus. You can see the lateral semicircular canal. You can see the posterior semicircular canal. So I'm going to now start drilling to expose the middle cranial fossa. Okay, so now the sinodual angle. So now the middle cranial fossa is being exposed. In the same way, I'm going, you can see now the lateral semicircular canal. That's the lateral, that's the posterior coming into view here. Can you guys see that? All right. The same way now, let's go and find the superior semicircular canal. The superior semicircular canal is always deep. I can already see the, the ampulla of the superior semicircular canal just there. It's always quite high and quite deep as well. So make more space. Okay, good. So we can already make out the superior semicircular canal coming into view. So with this now, let me now skeletonize the sigmoid sinus a little bit more. So, so I'm using a cutting drill all the way, right? Which is a bit more difficult to preserve structures. You can use diamond if you want to. It would be much easier to preserve structures. But I'm using cutting so that we can do it a bit more quickly. And exactly like how I showed just now, there's a sigmoid sinus. That's the dura over the sigmoid sinus. Vital sigmoid. Can you see? So once we have this, let me now just thin back the sigmoid sinus a bit more. The sound is changing again, which means I'm very close to the sigmoid sinus. You're going to find a juggler bulb. That's juggler bulb coming to view. Can you guys see that? Juggler bulb coming into view. So again, when you guys do this, don't use a cutting drill. Use a diamond, it'll be easier. It's much easier to destroy structures by using a cutting drill. But if you want to learn tactile sensation, use a cutting drill. That's how you learn to control your drill in the tactile sensation. Right? So again, the sigmoid sinus in this case is like paper. So here you can see the bone. There's a sigmoid sinus there. You can know how salary turn on. So here you can actually push the sigmoid sinus down. Can you see? So you can actually push. There. So I'm, I'm pushing the sigmoid sinus down, as you can see. And that gives us the. Uh, okay. So here, let's see whether we can dissect the bone away from the sigmoid sinus. Again, the sigmoid sinus is pa like paper here, yeah? So this is the dewa. That's the bone over the sigmoid sinus. Yes, nibble after this. I see as well, it's trained just like this. Can you, can you see how thin the sigmoid sinus is? Yeah, it's very, very, very thin. So I'm, I'm trying to dissect the sigmoid sinus from the bone. So usually in real life, what I'm doing here is exactly what I will do in real life. So once I'm, I'm able to push the sigmoid sinus down, I'll use a bone nibbler like this just to nibble it away. Unfortunately, can you see how thin the sigmoid sinus is? That is the pre-sigmoid. Can you see that? 
So even during the real surgery, this is exactly how we do. See how thin the sigmoid sinus wall is? It's amazing. There. It's paper thin. But this is where the pre sigmoid will come to. Yeah? Okay. So what we can do now, we can start drilling again. So all we need to do is push down the sigmoid sinus and then drill away this ledge. So this is the best way to do a pre sigmoid. That means you basically identify the sigmoid sinus and then push it down, as you can see here. And then drill like the way I'm doing. So now we're coming to the pre sigmoid. So again, remember, I'm using the largest cutting drill that we have. When you all do this, please use diamond. We are doing this with the largest cutting drill for just for speed. So now what I would like to do is to dissect the pre sigmoid a little bit more. Okay, and then we can see the endolymphatic sac. And that's the endolymphatic duct. Can you guys see that? Where the duct is entering. Okay, let me just drill a bit more. So we're going to go higher. Get a little bit more of the sinodural angle. Oh, hold the okay. So now we can dissect a little bit more. And that's the endolymphatic duct. Can you all see? How is entering inside? Can you zoom this? So we can actually open up the endolymphatic sac by using a pick. So this is the endolymphatic duct here. And you can actually open up the sac like this. And that's the sac. Can you all see? That's the endolymphatic sac here. Can you see on your screen? Yeah, that's the endolymphatic sac, and that's the endolymphatic duct here. Okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start uh, finishing off the middle cranial fossa and the retrosigmoid so that we can uh, join the whole exposure together. Okay? So that's where we open up the middle cranial fossa just now. Let's finish off, join them all together so that the middle cranial fossa is, is ex exposed. That's the dual coming into view. Can you guys see that? Same way, push the dual inside like that. Okay? And then you can start drilling away. So in real life, this will be done with a diamond drill. Nibble this bone away. Nibble this bone. That's the middle cranial fossa being exposed, as you can see. Okay? The same way. We're going to nibble this bone, and then if I join these two together, we have a middle canal fossa exposed now. So let me just remove all this bone. You can see some areas, the bone, the dua is very thin. So there's a middle canal fossa exposed. As you can see, so what we're going to do now is to join them both together. So again, as I said before, the disadvantage we have is that we are not using the largest possible cutting. Eh? So again, if you go slow, you cut quite a bit. If you go fast, you just polish. So now we're going to cut off, remove this piece of bone here, so that we can expose the transverse sinus. So the most dangerous burr is a small cutting burr, like what I'm using like this. Because that's when you can easily plunge inside. So the same way, there's a sigmoid sinus here. Let's see whether we can push in the sigmoid sinus. And now I'm going to follow to see whether we can expose the transverse sinus. So exactly like where I thought it will be, you can see the transverse sinus coming into view. So that's the dura. So that is the transverse sinus coming into view. So the transverse sinus is much more thicker than the sigmoid sinus as you can see in this case. So now you can see how the transverse sinus is coming here. The transverse sinus. This is retro sigmoid as you can see. Right? So push the dura down. 
And once you push the dewa down, we can drill the spot very quickly and very easily. So now the only thing we need to do is to join both the, the middle cranial fossa and the posterior cranial fossa together at the sinodual angle. There. But this is the most difficult part to drill because you're meeting a horizontal and a slightly vertical in a valley. In re so real life, we will use a diamond drill. I can see the sound changing already. There's a hole there. That's thanks to my cutting drill. So let's see if we can dissect this dura away. There, you can see I'm dissecting the posterior cranial fossa away, as you can see. Then let's see whether we can dissect the middle cranial fossa away as well. There, can you see guys? So now the middle cranial fossa has been dissected away and the posterior cranial fossa has been dissected away as well. Okay, bone nibble is ready. And then we are able to nibble this bone away. So I wanted to do this entire dissection with one drill, okay? So you don't have to do with a cutting drill like the way I did. You can change from a cutting drill into a uh, into a diamond drill when you come near the dura. But if you want to practice tactile sensation, then cutting drill is your best bet. Can you see? I can see the superior sagittal sinus already. Elevator again. So that's a superior sagittal sinus. I apologize for the hole. Some parts of the dura is very thin. Look at how thick the bone is. Yeah? So the bone is very thick in a sinodural angle here. Right. Somebody? There you go. So now that is the sinodural angle. Can you see how thin the sinodural angle is and how thick the bone is? So this part is always difficult to drill because that's where both of them meet together. Okay, house elevator again. And this again, I'm going to dissect this area down. Okay. See how thin this dura is? Uh, it's very, very thin. That's why we ended up causing a hole there. Okay? And bone nibbler as well. And here. Okay. So now, let's have a quick look at the anatomy that we have, okay? So this is the sigmoid sinus. I'm going to open up the sigmoid. Do you have a... Uh, I'm just I thought I was using a scissors. Can you see sigmoid sinus in this case? It's very thin. It's almost like, so there. That's the sigmoid sinus here. Can you see? That's where it becomes the transverse sinus. Okay? And if you open it up, it goes to jugular bulb. That is jugular bulb down here. Okay? So what we can do is we can drill off this ledge here and see how the sigmoid sinus becomes jugular bulb. And here, gently, if we can, so the jugular bulb is very, very thin. Can you see the blue that's coming out here? That's jugular bulb. And we remove this piece of bone. Hopefully, we can see how the jugular bulb is formed. I can only see the facial nerve. The facial nerve is here. Okay. So that's lateral semicircular canal, the posterior semicircular canal, and the superior semicircular canal. And now we're going under the facial nerve, under the labyrinth, to identify the jugular bulb. That's the whole of jugular bulb. Can you see, guys? So now I'm going to join them both together. And you can see how... Can you reach it? There. Can you see jugular bulb now? Okay. See how the sigmoid sinus turns. Can you see how the sigmoid sinus from here? Okay. It turns, we've flipped open the sigmoid sinus now. Turns downwards, forms the jugular bulb, goes up, and then comes down again. So let me just drill to show you the lower part of the jugular bulb. This blue here is the jugular bulb. There, can you see? 
Can you see how it turns upwards before it comes down? And this entire thing here is jugular bulb. Is that okay, guys? So again, middle cranial fossa, sigmoid sinus, posterior cranial fossa with an endolymphatic duct. That is the endolymphatic duct that is open. That's the endolymphatic, sorry, endolymphatic sac, I apologize. That is the sac that is open. And this is the duct. Can you see how it's entering the labyrinth? That's the lateral semicircular canal, the posterior semicircular canal. And the superior will be on its way here. There's a superior petrosal sinus here. There, I just opened up a little bit. There. You guys? Middle cranial fossa, posterior cranial fossa, sigmoid sinus, transverse sinus, jugular bulb, endolymphatic sac open, endolymphatic duct, lateral semicircular canal, posterior semicircular canal, and superior semicircular canal. All right? She has drilled and delineated the superior semicircular canal very nicely, as you can see. That's the lateral, that's the posterior semicircular canal, and that's the superior semicircular canal, and that's the class communale, where the, the posterior and the superior semicircular canal meet with each other. And uh, again, you can see how beautifully she has drilled and exposed the labyrinth. She has also nicely delineated the endolymphatic duct. So that's, you can see very nicely the endolymphatic duct, and as I exposed before this, the endolymphatic sac is just here. This is the double blasted jacket of the endolymphatic sac. Okay. Can you see that on the screen, guys? Yeah. So that is the endolymphatic sac that's been opened up here as well.